I always get questions like, uh, Apostle, how can I prophesy accurately? On this video, I'm going to be talking about how to prophesy accurately. Enjoy. YouTube family blessings. Uh, this is your apostle, the Black Smith. I believe that you are doing okay. This is episode number four, Secrets of the Seers. We are still continuing with the series. I want you to drop your comments and let me know how was the first episode, second episode, third episode. Just to let me know, are you learning? Are your eyes not the scales falling off your eyes? Are you understanding the prophetic better? I would love to all that um, and more. So utilize the comment uh, section and to communicate and let me know how is it going so this is our episode number four and on this episode we are talking about how to prophesy accurately so there are things you need to know for you to be able to prophesy accurately and we're going to be looking at the uh, at the maybe two scriptures um rather a uh, number of verses uh, today so i want you to stay <clears throat> tuned get something to drink and don't allow anyone to disturb you because i'm about to reveal some stuff in the prophetic that are going to help you i think the first thing that you must understand is that to prophesy accurately you need to hear accurately get it so prophesying accurately is dependent on you hearing the lord accurately so in other words you must not focus on if you want to prophesy and prophesy accurately you must not focus on how to prophesy accurately or rather or rather on the prophesying accurately you must you must focus on how can i hear the lord accurately remember what prophecy is prophecy is hearing from god and then speaking to humans that is prophecy so for you to prophesy you first need to hear god so the, the real challenge here is not prophesying accurately. The real problem is hearing the Lord accurately. And I want to show you today scripturally how you can already hear the Lord. In fact, one of the my favorite verses in front of me right now is John 10 verse 27. My sheep, they hear my voice. And I know that. My sheep, they hear my voice. You know, this verse used to disturb me as a baby Christian because... The Bible boldly de declare, rather Jesus, he, he boldly declare in John 10, 27, that my sheep can hear my voice. And, and I know I'm a sheep of his fold. You see, so the question is, are you his sheep? Are you one of his sheep? If you're one of his sheep, the scripture says, my sheep can hear my voice. In other words, the first thing you must believe is that you need to believe that you can already hear God. You see, a lot of people, they're trapped in the prophetic. They don't grow because uh, <clears throat> they are still, they still think, I, I, I need to hear the Lord. I need to hear the Lord. I need to hear the Lord. But you need to start from a premises, right? Now I'm teaching you how you can hear the voice of the Lord accurately. Because <clears throat> you see, confidence is very important in the prophetic. But you are not going to have confidence in the prophetic if you don't think you are hearing from God. So the first thing to do, at least, is to believe that you can already hear God. And I know <clears throat> the reason why I'm saying this verse used to disturb me as a baby Christian was that my experience told me that I couldn't hear God at the time. <clears throat> and the Bible told me I could hear God because I was born again. I had met Jesus, Lord, the Lord of my life, meaning I was his sheep. 
So if I'm his sheep and I read in his word, Jesus says, my sheep, they hear my voice. Now you have a, you have a situation now. Your experience says you can't hear the Lord. The word of Christ says, my sheep hear my voice. So question, are you going to believe your experience or are you going to believe the word of the Lord? See, so many people, what they do is that they believe their experience. They don't believe the word of the Lord. So the first place that you want to start from is like this supposed to be a conviction at some point in your life. I can hear God. I can hear God. Maybe sometimes you need to make that a mantra and say that to yourself. I can hear the Lord accurately. Wake up in the morning. I can hear the Lord accurately. Look yourself in the mirror. I can hear the Lord accurately. Right? Because that's where you need to begin. Because if you don't believe you can hear the Lord, then you don't believe the Bible. So you don't believe the word of God because Jesus says, my sheep, they can hear my voice. So this is why um, in our prophetic schools, I've always said, we don't teach you how to hear God. We teach you to recognize that you have been hearing God. Right? So because remember, friends, when we talk about the voice of God, one of the things that you we must be careful not to be stereotyped about the voice of God, because the voice of God it's not always a literal voice. The voice of God is not always the literal voice. And by that I mean the Lord can speak to you in a dream. That's the voice of God. The Lord can speak to you in a vision. That's the voice of God. The voice of God can come to you. The Lord can speak to you through your impressions. That's the voice of God. And remember I told you there are low levels of uh, prophetic revelation. There are high levels of prophetic revelations. The Lord can speak to you through mental pictures. That's the voice of God. How did Paul the Apostle knew that their voyage was going to be with danger? He said to the people who were in charge of him as a prisoner, he said, says, I perceive that this voyage is not going to be without danger. And the word to perceive, perceive means to know by feeling. Have you, have you ever been in a place where something went wrong in your life, but before anything went wrong, you had a feeling that something is going to go wrong? The Lord was trying to speak to you, but using impressions. So when we talk about the voice of God, one of the things you need to learn how to do is don't just become, don't restrict the voice of God to the audible voice of God. And there is the audible voice of God. And I spoke about the five levels of the voice of God, right? I think on, on here on, on, on our YouTube channel. So you, you should check the video out or I will I try to attach the video somewhere, maybe here or here, I don't know. But I'll, I'll try it. I did a video. So that's what you need to understand. So when Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. When you are miseducated, because the other thing is miseducation or lack of prophetic education makes you to have unrealistic or rather yeah, to have wrong expectations about the prophetic or about the voice of God. Let's say, for example, um, you are about to travel somewhere. And in, on your journey going there, you are, go, you are going to have an accident. There's going to be a terrible accident on that journey. So you prepare yourself, you shower yourself, you, you dress up, you're ready to go. And as, when, as you're dressing up or fin finishing taking a shower, uh, you suddenly feel like you don't want to go. It, the, and the impression comes on you. It comes so strong that you cannot ignore it. You, know, you just feel like, okay, I don't want to go. Like, you know, as if like, maybe sometimes you feel something is wrong or you just don't want to go. And then let's say after an hour, that, that feeling, that impression begins to lift from your spirit. And when that impression begins to lift from your spirit, now you feel like, okay, uh, let me go. Why didn't I want to go? Okay, I feel different. Let me just go. And then you go on your road. You find that there's an accident, a terrible accident. And probably you were supposed to be caught up in that accident. You see, so you find that the Lord spoke to you through your impressions. The voice of God came to you through your impressions. So when Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, don't just limit that to the audible voice of God, external audible voice of God. Don't just limit that to dream. Don't limit that to vision. Don't just limit that to mental pictures. You, that's why I said to you, if you don't want to miss the voice of God another day in your life, stop trying to choose how you want God to speak to me, to you. Lord, show me a vision. I want to hear the audible voice of God. Those are powerful stamps. High level prophetic revelation. 
uh, that everyone uh, wants. But you must not want them so much that you block out every other low uh, level of prophetic revelation that the voice of God might come to you through. So you must remain. In other words, you need to be open to the Lord to say, whatever way, whichever way you decide to speak to me, I'm going to hear you. Are you getting it? So Jesus says, my sheep. So when, Jesus, when the scripture says, my sheep, hear my voice. I used to be like, okay, but <laughs> but I don't hear the Lord. What's going on? <laughs> and and, and, and the, why? Because I was, of course, I was raised in a Pentecostal charismatic church. That didn't really teach the prophetic. That didn't have any prophetic teachings. So but if, if I had been taught about prophetic impressions, and prophetic mental pictures and, and all types of visions and the levels of the voice of God and stuff. Like, for example, a lot of you, when you were new to the faith, you used to listen to the Lord through the still small voice in your spirit. And when you were new to the faith, you used to take that voice serious and you would not miss it because you were so passionate, you were so hungry for the Lord and you were so excited to know Christ and you wanted to know even more and more things about Christ. And then one day what happened you begin exposed to prophets maybe who are moving in the realm of visions, open visions who are moving in the realm of the audible voice of God. You know, you begin to meet people who have developed in the prophetic. They're no longer just dependent on prophetic impressions, but they can receive from other high levels of prophetic revelation. And then you begin to desire, which is a good thing, to move to that level. But the problem you did, you began to despise lower level prophetic revelation. So when the Bible says, my sheep, when Jesus says, my sheep, hear my voice, the Lord can warn you. Like, just think about this warning that uh, the example I made, you were about to get into an accident and then the Lord warned you. But the, but the Lord, the voice of the Lord came through your impression. Now imagine someone who, I mean, there are so many people actually in the world, they can tell you before they got involved in an accident, they will tell you, I knew this was going to happen. And they didn't hear a voice. They didn't see a vision. They, you understand? But they had a feeling, the impression that something bad is about to happen and the way I'm going. But the person will go against the feeling. <laughs> the person will go against the feeling. And then we say, and then if the person is a Christian, they get involved in an accident, then they can start asking the Lord, Lord, why? Why me? Why didn't Lord you want me? The Lord wants you. But maybe the voice of god didn't come the way you preferred so you didn't take it serious because it was not an audible voice because it was not a vision you didn't take it serious. in fact some people don't even take it as a dream they could see something happening in a dream they will still continue with the journey and it happens and then they would say i dreamt yesterday <laughs> yes you dreamt but it doesn't mean anything now because you ignored the voice of god there's another portion of scripture verse i love in the bible paul said so many people have disobeyed god by disobeying their consciousness Remember, your consciousness is the voice of your spirit. Your feelings, the, the voice of your body. Reason is the voice of your soul. So your spirit as a voice is consciousness. Your soul as a voice is reason. Your body as a voice is feelings. How do you know when something is wrong with your body? Feelings. Your feelings will begin to, you begin to feel pain. You begin to feel not well. Your body is speaking to you, something is wrong with me. But why don't you ignore those feelings? If you are feeling sick, you're not feeling well, why can't you ignore that and say, ah, this is not accurate. I didn't hear an audible voice. My body didn't speak audibly and told me that I'm sick. <laughs> but you take it to rest, right? Because you have learned to interpret what those feelings mean. <laughs> are you getting it? So, 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 like, for example, you hear someone saying, I'm not so well today. And then if you say to them, what's wrong? No, I'm not feeling well. Uh oh So you concluded that you are not well based on how you feel. <laughs> so there's information that you got about what's happening in your body. Not because an audible voice came to you. Not because you suddenly had a vision of your body, your, your, your body, uh, uh, your body, right, your biology. But you had a feeling, right? So the same thing, the voice of your soul is reason, right? And 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 in emotions and and all of that, just leave that. But I love one Paul says, a lot of people disobeyed God by disobeying their consciousness. So the Lord can speak in your spirit, to your spirit, because remember the Holy Spirit lives in your spirit. So this is what we call spirit to spirit communication. The Holy Spirit, when He wants to speak to you, He can speak speak to your heart. 
right? And your heart now, your consciousness, the still small voice in your spirit, you can begin to hear that voice. So you, that's why I always say this to prophetic people. Embrace starting on lower levels of prophetic revelation. Don't ignore, reject low levels of prophetic revelation because you want to hear the audible voice of God. Are you following? You have to listen. And I'm I, again, I want to encourage you again, go back and watch the message I did on the five levels of the voice of God. The five levels of visions. Right? I'm going to do another session and talk about maybe five levels of dreams so that you know the difference between these two, these, these things. Okay? So, okay, let's continue. So you get that? So when scripture says my sheep can hear my voice, that's the point I needed to make. Don't just think visions. Don't just think um, uh, 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 audible voice. Think of the other many ways that the Lord can speak to you, like the, prof the five four prophetic faculties, senses. The sense I spoke about, sense of hearing, sight, smell, and taste. Right? Just as you use them, I always say this to you, just as you use these natural senses to pick up information in the natural, in the spirit you can also use. So there's some people you have a strong sense of smell in the spirit. Some of you, you have a strong sense of hearing in the spirit. Some of you, you have a strong sense of sight in the spirit. You get it? So you must be able to utilize all the senses to pick up information in the random of the spirit. Are you getting it? So imagine if um, you, you hear in the natural, you only depend on your sense of hearing and sense of sight, and you ignore smell and taste and touch. What was going to happen? You were going to put your hand on the hot plate, right? And you were, you were going to terribly get bent. And you will not take serious uh, the sensation, the burning, because you will be like, no, I don't see it. No, I don't hear it. You know, I keep, no, no, no. So the same, this is what people are doing in the prophetic. They ignore the voice of God because it's not coming the way they want it to come. But being prophetic simply means you are able to access the voice of God. So as a prophetic person, you need to hear the Lord anyhow he decides to speak to you. Right? So the scripture says, John 10, 17, my sheep can hear my voice. This should be your confession from today. I can hear the voice of the Lord. I can hear the voice of the Lord. I want you to say that out loud. I can hear the voice of God. Right? I need you to say it until you believe it. Because sometimes you see, one of the reasons why a lot of people struggle in the prophetic to grow you have carnal, you have the carnal man, the natural man judging, sitting on the chair of a judge to decide uh, whether this is God or this is not God in your life, in your encounters and your experiences. That's why Paul, uh, where he spoke about where we're going to read, uh, he spoke about how the, net, the things of the spirit, they are foolishness to a carnal mind. Like someone, for example, if I say to you, you can hear in the spirit through the sense of smell, that might sound foolish to someone, like cow. Like how do you smell in the spirit? And normal is because to the men of the senses, they don't know how real the spirit realm is. <laughs> to them, reality is limited to what they can pick up through the five physical senses. But stuffs can be smelled in the spirit. <laughs> you get it? So the same thing uh, with um, the, 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 if, 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 if you, your carnality, if you, if, if, the, if you allow the natural man to play the judge, the Lord will speak to you through a mental picture and the carnal man will say, that's not the Lord. <laughs> the Lord will speak to you through your consciousness and the carnal man again is going to say, the natural man is going to say again, that is not the Lord. Some, so, some of you, your greatest challenge is that you have the natural man sitting on the seat of the judge telling you, this is God, this is not God. That's your greatest problem. So you discard a lot of prophetic revelation that comes to you as coincidence or it's not God because you allow the natural man to do the judging. So some of you, your greatest challenge now and your task and your assignment is that you need to dismantle the natural man. The Bible says the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit because the foolishness to him. Why? Because the Bible says they are spiritually descend. They're spiritually descend. So these are not natural things. Those are the things of the Spirit. So that's why some of the things I'm saying right now will not make sense to a carnal believer, will not make sense to a carnal man who is not born again. So, so this is why you must not just try to intellectualize, uh, intellectualize what I'm saying. You need spiritual understanding. You need spiritual discernment. 
That's why scripture says some people cannot receive the things of the spirit uh, because they are spiritually descent. Right? So check this out. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 2. I'm going to teach you something very, very powerful. Okay? Just, just sit where you are seated. Don't allow anyone to disturb, to disturb you. And if you have not subscribed, I want you to smash that um, subscription uh, button and destroy the like uh, 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 button. And also uh, make sure that you give this, uh, uh, drop your comment and, and make sure you give this video a thumbs up. May the Lord bless you, right? I'm going to be doing more content like this. So we are reading the word of the Lord in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse, from verse 9. Um, that, that is what the scripture mean when they say, no one has seen, so there's something that has not been seen. No one has heard. There's something that has not been heard. Remember, when the scripture says no one has seen, it's talking about the sense of sight. And then it says um, no one has heard, right? Uh, it's talking about the sense of hearing. And it says no mind has imagined what God has prepared. He's talking about, um, he's talking about mental impressions, right? No one has imagined what the Lord um, has prepared for those who love him. So meaning... There are things that God has for us as his people, right? But those things, there's the, 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 those things, the, uh, no one has seen them. No one has heard them. No one has imagined those things, right? Let's continue reading. Uh, verse 10. But this verse does not apply to us, right? Because I need to say that again. Verse 10. But it was, but it was to us that God revealed these things. By his spirit. And the key word there in verse 10 is the word revealed. You see, this is why even when we talk about the gifts of utterances. And we talk about the gift of revelations. You need to know the difference when you are prophesying. There are times you are going to get things by the gifts of revelation. Word of knowledge. Gifts of revelation. Um, um, discerning, discernment of spirits. The gifts of revelation. We are talking um, the word of wisdom. These are gifts of revelation. The gifts of revelation, these are gifts that reveal. These are not speaking gifts. These are not gifts that say something. Or put another way, these are gifts that show you something. See, the word reveal means to uncover. It's as if there's something there, but it's covered with a veil. And then you remove the veil. And then you start to see the thing. This is what we call revelation or divine disclosure. So there are things that are revealed. So... A lot of people, for example, they will even ignore revelation because they want utter the gifts of utterances, or rather, they're interested in speaking giftings. Or they're like, for example, the Lord can choose to speak to you through revelation, not the audible voice. Right? So if He decides to speak to you through revelation, are you going to be able to pick up that this thought is a word of knowledge? Right? Uh, I'm seeing, I'm praying, I'm praying in the intercession. Someone comes to my mind. You see someone in your screen of your mind. The Lord's trying to speak to me about this person. You press through. Remember the key? The Lord will always try to hook your attention. So you need to pay attention. So that when the Lord shows you something, you follow through, you press, you ask the Lord, what is this? And further revelation will come. Right? So, but when you are prophesying, generally, there are gifts of revelation that will come to you. The word of knowledge. Right? Uh, where you know things about people, what, what, what they were going through, what is happening to them. Uh, going as far as knowing their names, their addresses. This is word of knowledge. Uh, some guy, uh, some, some, some of some, some. There's a, there's a gentleman who asked me on the group yesterday, how can I prophesy like deep, like deep in the prophetic, like names? And that's not deep. <laughs> you can't call that. That's the depth of the prophetic. That's word of knowledge. The prophetic is broad. You see, a lot of people are limited when it comes to the prophetic because they think. Uh, uh, the, when we're talking about being deep in the prophetic, we're talking about you being able to call someone's name. That's not being deep. You can be able to call someone's address and not even know the heart of God uh, for your nation. Not, not, not even know the heart of God for your church. So that's not the depth of the prophetic. That's a gift. So, so anytime you hear someone telling you that's deep, you need to tell them you're very shallow you and initiated in the prophetic. You, you still need education. Right? So, but I was talking about the gifts of revelations, right? Because the gifts of revelation, they, these are gifts that reveal. So when you're prophesying, there are times when things are revealed to you. And they are, and remember the gift of revelations that will use your mind, right? The Lord can speak to you 
through mental pictures. And the Lord can speak to you through your feelings. In fact, I found out that the Lord can also speak to you through your emotions. Sometimes you are praying for someone. You stand in front of someone. And suddenly you are hit by depression. And you are not someone struggling, suffering with depression. But suddenly as you pray, lay hands, you try to pray for this person, you feel so depressed. That's the word of knowledge that is coming through your emotions. That's why, again, if the Lord, you are that type that God speaks to you also through your emotions. Sometimes you might think you are emotionally unstable. People in your world can think you are emotionally unstable because you could be like this one moment, the other time you're like that, you're like that. It's like the Lord is pulling the strings on your emotions. <laughs> right? But again, of course, we have to exercise caution. Now, you don't take your emotional problems and say the Lord is speaking to you, right? Because some people are just moody. <laughs> so you can't say that is the Lord and you can't say you're prophetic. You need help, right? But I'm talking about, let's say, for example, word of knowledge for healing with those who have a gift of healing. You come to the service, you know you are healed. You know you don't have any health issues. And then you get into the service and suddenly you have a headache, your leg is painful, your back is painful, your, your heart is beating funny, you are coming. That's not you. You cannot now start thinking that you are having an attack. The enemy is attacking my health and start binding demons. No. This is when you see the evangelist saying, hey, there's someone here I, uh, There's someone here who has a heart problem. The Lord wants to heal a heart problem. There's someone here with a headache. The Lord wants to heal a headache. There's someone here, your knee, your, your right knee. Uh, you're feeling pain and this. The Lord wants to heal you. And you see people coming forward. Coming forward. Mm -hmm. This word of knowledge, it comes through the body. Right. So the same thing emotionally, the Lord can be able to, uh, for you, make you to pick up that someone's going through depression through your, your, through your soul. So it can be revealed through your soul. So, but if you are focused on the audible voice or just seeing how many stars you're going to be missing. <laughs> I read the story of Bob Jones um, when he was ministering with Steve uh, Topson. Um, uh, 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 Steve said they were praying for people and then he was tired uh, or rather his eyes started itching something like that and then he stopped he left the prayer line and then he was there and he started to scratch his eye and Bob without turning to look at Steve when he was busy praying for other people Bob said to say Steve that's not you <laughs> because Steve he, he was just at the prayer line praying for people and he's thinking this is my eye, my eye is itchy, let me scratch. Only to find that he's getting a word of knowledge. There's someone who has an eye problem. So, so the gifts of revelation, you must understand how the information can be coming to you. So it's not always, I want you to get this, because the stereotype is that people who want to be the prophetic, they want to see, especially see, they get people around the globe. Men of God, pray for me, open my eyes. Men of God, unlock me. <laughs> so and the Bible says if you uh if you're not faithful with the little who who's gonna trust you with much. So some of you already have those impressions, revelations, the words of knowledge they're operating, but you don't take them seriously, you, you are not aware. So one of the keys to um receive revelation through the gifts of revel revelatory gifts, you need to become aware. So if for example I step into on the pulpit to prophesy. I'm not just focused on my eyes and my ears, right? But I'm, I'm focused on my body. Is anyone sick here? Can I, can I pick up someone sick through my body? If I'm stepping on the pulpit, I pay attention to my soul. Especially when I go to prayer line, I start laying hands. And my soul, I pay attention, right? Like, for example, sometimes, let me show you very, some, something very simple. You can lay hands upon someone and suddenly... Uh, uh, you feel your sexual drive rising up, right? The Lord speaking to you, the person might be suffering from the spirit of lust and sexual perversion. <laughs> you see? So there's a place in the prophetic where your entire being begins to listen to God. That's where you want to go. And, that's, and once you get there, this is when now you're not going to miss the Lord. This is where now... Um, anyhow the Lord decides to speak to you, you're going to be able to pick it up. Are you getting it? So, so the scripture, but, 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 it, but this, the context here is talking about the things that God has for, for his people, right? He has prepared for those who love him. But I, I'm borrowing the principle to say to you, uh, 
these things are revealed to us by the Spirit. And I'm going to share some very powerful stuff that uh, I want you to stay tuned. Um, okay, let's continue. Uh, verse 10. But it was to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit. Key, the second key word, by His Spirit. So revelation is by the Holy Spirit. Prophetic revelation is by the Holy Spirit. So that's why I always say to you, you have to seek Baptism in the Holy Spirit more than you are looking for impartation of the anointing of another man of God, woman of God. See, sometimes you ignore the person of the Holy Spirit. Who is, by the way, inside of you? Who could make you move in the high levels of the prophetic that you want? But you ignore him because you think you need the another, another prophet. And I'm not attacking impartation. I believe in impartation. I impart myself. But I'm saying... You have to understand that the source of all prophetic revelation is the person of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so it's, it's, they are revealed to us by what? By the Spirit. So in other words, once you understand these things, your relationship with the Holy Spirit must become very, very important. You must really take it super serious, your relationship with the Holy Spirit. And then it says, For His Spirit searches, searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. So the Spirit of God, He searches, I uh, love this, the Spirit of God, um, He searches out everything. You want people's names, you want whatever it is. You want to tap into the infinite knowledge of God. The key is the Spirit, divine revelation, right? Uh, he searches out everything and He shows us, uh, He shows us God's deep secrets. So He shows us, so even visions, they're from the Holy Spirit. Uh, right, I spoke about, um, there's a message I did uh, here, a video I did here on YouTube, part one and part two, on how to see visions. You need to watch those videos. Right? A lot of pre prophetic people, they are taken advantage of and they are, they, they are hindered in growing in the prophetic because they are miseducated about what is the prophetic and how the prophetic operates. So you see people operating in the prophetic and the prophets, they're very secretive. They will not tell you the things that I tell you. They won't tell you because if they want you to think every information they get, maybe probably they are seeing a vision or they're hearing a voice, but that's not always the case. No matter how accurate the information is. There are times, for example, a prophet would know who you are. It just came to his mind. A prophet would know you're going through depression. He felt it in his soul. You see? So, but prophets don't want to talk about this because it creates the mystery around them, right? And people always feel like, maybe these are specially gifted people who were born like this. Maybe I cannot be like this. Nope. You see, my job in the prophetic is to, is to demystify the prophetic and make it accessible to all believers. Because the Bible says you may all prophesy. The Bible says desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. So it is the will of God that we all tap into the prophetic and prophesy. Moses says, oh, how I wish that the Lord will give his spirit, uh, uh, that all God's people were prophets, and that God will give them his spirit. So Moses also understood that the secret to the prophetic is the spirit of God. So I wrote on our, on our Facebook community that the, the person of the ministry uh, of the person of the Holy Spirit is the entry point into the prophetic dimension. So once you understand this, I'm telling you, you see, my teaching, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not just teaching you uh, the prophetic, but I'm teaching you how to have a good relationship with God. I'm, I'm also amending your prayer life. I'm also amending your relationship with God. Because so many, so many, so many people, they just want to teach prophetic technique, techniques, but they don't talk about how the source of things. Because the Holy Spirit is not only the source of your revelation, He's also the source of your prophetic power. So you see, so in other words, it's back to basics, your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Stop running around. It's back to your prayer closet, back, back, back to the prayer mountain, back to all night prayers, back to spending the, the whole night in your room praying. This is, this is what I'm preaching. This is, this is what I'm teaching. <laughs> right? Because a lot of prophets, because they get money from doing prophetic schools, they emphasize too much impartation. You need someone to unlock you. 
You need someone to unlock you. You need someone to unlock you. You need someone to unlock you. They so ingrain it in your head that you forget that there's someone could be the person of the Holy Spirit. So every time when you think prophetic activation, prophetic impartation, you are thinking the prophet. Right? And when you go to the prophet, the prophet is going to, of course, going to charge you for that. So a lot of prophets now, they found a way to say, okay, this is how, um, this is how I'm going to do it. This is how I'm going to do it. So if I put this teaching, I ingrain this teaching in the minds of the people and say, this is how it's done. <laughs> right? So a lot of people now, uh, they will end up coming to me for activations and impartation. Then I'm going to be collecting the money in the process. So that's a very dangerous thing. So you see, one of the things that I saw as a baby Christian uh, that the church is suffering for, from and I continue to fight is imbalance. We are always extreme. We take good biblical teachings and we drive them out of context. And anytime you take a biblical teaching and you drive it out of context, it's going to minister more harm than good. So impartation is biblical, but we can push it out of context and arrange the whole thing as to make you who are aspiring into the prophetic to or want us, to need us, to say, I need the blacksmith for me to move in the prophetic. Right? But I'm saying to you, as much as that might be the case, don't forget that the Holy Spirit can be able to do that for you. Because remember, the revelation, the Bible says he has revealed these things by the Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit, he's, he searches out everything and he shows up deep, deep things, uh, deep secrets of God. <laughs> you see, so in other words, if that's why even Jesus spoke about this day in God. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy. Jesus said, I have so much to tell you, but you cannot bear it all now. You cannot carry it all now. He says, how be it when the Holy Spirit has come? He says, he shall lead you into all truth. He said, he will, he will show you even things to come. Jesus was even there, there. Like, oh, come on, oh, come on. Can you imagine the prophetic is in the book of John? Jesus is teaching the prophetic. But you will go and pay for a prophetic school. Because you can't see the prophetic in the Bible. That when Jesus says, I have so much to tell you, uh, but you cannot carry it all now. But how beat when he, the spirit of truth has come, he shall lead you into whole, into the whole truth. Number one, in other words, revelation, he would reveal the truth to you, but he will also show you things to come. So Jesus has already taught you the prophetic. Jesus has already shown you the secret to the prophetic is that you need the person of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> So, and again, I'm not saying you must not give, you must not, you must not sow seeds, but I'm saying the prophets must not manipulate ignorant people about the prophetic. People who are not initiated into the prophetic to say, you need me, right? If you don't have me as the, uh, the blacksmith, then you cannot move with the prophetic. I must unlock you. I must impart you. If I don't do that, nothing is going to happen. You get it? We have to put everything back into balance. Are you getting it? Okay, let me just finish. Verse 11, no one can know a person's thoughts except uh, that person's own spirit. Right? It says the spirit of God, he searches out everything. Right? He reveals to us the deep secrets of God. It's the spirit of God. So verse 11 says no one knows a person's thoughts except the person's spirit. So right now you have thoughts. I have no a way to know your thoughts, not unless I pick them up by the word of knowledge. But your spirit knows your thoughts. So the same thing, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. And then God gives you His Spirit. So when God gives you His Spirit, in other words, God is giving you His thoughts. So right now, you know people's names, you know people's addresses, you know people's situations. Right now, because why? You have the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God has all of those things. They are right there in your spirit. Your problem is you don't know how to access them. <laughs> Oh my God, oh my God. Come on, if you have not subscribed, I want you to consider subscribing because I'm really releasing some stuffs here. If you love, uh, especially if you love this type of stuffs and you will love me to make more videos like this, smash that subscribe button because I'm going to be releasing more uh, stuffs uh, like this. So right now as you're sitting wherever you are, there are things you know that you don't know that you know because no one knows the thoughts of a person except the person's spirit. No, and the same thing, uh, if you read this, read the whole scripture. No one, no, um, no one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. 
and no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. So the same thing, just as I cannot know your own thoughts except your own spirit, not unless I'm moving in the word of knowledge, the same thing, no one can know the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. So you cannot know the mind of Christ if you don't have the spirit of God. But what if you have the spirit of God? It means now you have access to private classified information that is lying there in your spirit that is waiting for you to tap into it. <laughs> the same thing I told you that at least you need to start by believing that you can hear God. Second thing you need to believe, you need to believe now. You know all things. Not because you are sovereign, but because you have the all-knowing spirit inside of you. You have all the information right now inside of you. Your duty now is to learn how to tap into that information. <laughs> so he reveals the one the Holy Spirit he also shows. You see? Okay. Uh, verse 12. And we, are, and we have received God's spirit. I love this. We have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit. So we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. Oh, come on. So scripture is even telling you the reason why you have received God's spirit is so that you can know. <laughs> so that you can know. So the purpose of one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit to you is to reveal to you. Like Jesus said, he will lead you to the truth. What, number two, he will show you things to come. So the spirit of prophecy is the person of the Holy Spirit. On the next episode, on episode number five, I'm going to be talking about the prophetic spirit. And I'm going to be teaching you how you can tap into the information that is already in the inside of you. This is where I'm going to leave it. Again, thank you so much for subscribing. Um, uh, 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 thank you for so much for those who have just joined us now. I saw a lot of people who have joined us. May the Lord bless you. In, like, in a week, we got over 200 subscribers. So may the Lord joy, bless you. Thank you for joining our prophetic community. I hope you are learning and you are enjoying this. And again, if you're watching this and you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? hit that subscription button and i'm gonna see you on the next video this is apostle blacksmith and i'm signing out